So let's talk a little bit about independent film. I know the original definition of independent film was, was something like any film that was made outside of the, the major six Hollywood studios. Um, but I think over, over the years, there's been so many changes in the film industry that that's probably a different definition. And probably everyone here has a different idea of what independent film means. So what do people think when you tell them you're an independent filmmaker and what are some of the misconceptions you have to correct? Basically they think we're broke and they're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe talk a little bit about funding. Is that what it means, independent of studio funding? Uh, yeah, that's what, I mean, again, this is my first film, my first documentary, and I spent more time looking for funding or trying to get funding than I actually did making the film. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I, like I said, I'm from Canada, and it's a little bit different. And we're actually lucky to have a lot of uh, government and arts uh, funding. It's still not easy to get uh, applying for funding and grants, but we have a lot of those. Um, I was lucky enough to actually have a friend of the family start me off giving me some money. And then from there, I took it to um, w uh, the same kind of like a public broadcaster, um, same as PBS here. And they liked the idea. So that's how funding came along. And then different things fell into place, but it was still you know, it takes up half your time, and I think uh, nowadays it's, uh, it's actually a lot easier to make a film, because everybody can make a film now with digital cameras, digital editing, but actually getting it shown, getting it out there is, is the hard, harder part. I'll, um, I'll chime in on that one. I think um, the whole definition of what an independent film, and public film is a term we might have to relook at it because we were shooting digital video. A lot of people, I, I, don't, I don't know about all, all of you guys, but we certainly were. But um, anybody can make a movie and anybody can get it seen right now. You have YouTube. Um, so as a, you know, it kind of comes down to uh, the uh, Napster syndrome. You know, the old musicians thought that was the greatest thing in the world. You know, they, your music is going to be heard by that many more people. Or the new ones, well, you know, we still want to profit and you know, be able to re take a return on our life's investment. So I personally, I think there are like three different categories. There's, you know, you can make anything. You can tell a story in five seconds. You can do it in five minutes, and you can have an audience. So does that constitute a film? Um, I suppose so. I, I don't know what you guys think, but uh, uh, and you can find your audience now. We went back and forth with it. with Hayes. We went back and forth with this because very early on we had gotten a distribution offer, but it was specifically internet based. And we all, the filmmakers, were like, well, no, 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 no. We we want to see if it has legs first because there's something about this experience of you know, a theatrical run, be it uh, uh, festivals or whatever, that really makes you feel like that makes you make, feel more like a real filmmaker. I, I don't know how else to say it. I, I'm curious what you guys think on that level. Well, living in Los Angeles and being an independent filmmaker, it's, it's pretty funny uh, in some ways because everyone's trying to get in with the studios and um, I'm pretty bullheaded. So I just, I wrote something and I shot it on HD, but I funded it because I didn't want to have to beg for money because that was distasteful to me. And I really admire it because it's hard for an artist to go and say, you know, could I have some money to make my movie? Um, I didn't want to cede any control either, so I just went and shot it and then cut it um, and then you put it out there and you hope for the best, you know. So I think that to me is independent film. So I really congratulate all the filmmakers that go out and they do it. And I think anyone can make a movie, you know. Uh, it's just, you know, you have to have a good story. And then I, I do think that America really benefits from it because you're not being fed what the studios want you to uh, watch. And they just want your money. Um, I think that you're able to see a lot of more about America by watching independent movies in many different parts of it as well. So that's what's so rich about uh, visiting these festivals. You talked a little bit about the financing of films. I know um, in the festival there's films that were made for you know, um, with a camcorder for a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks, you know, a short 
to films, and I think probably all the films on this panel budgets were $100,000 and more. Can you, I think there's a perception that it means no budget. Can you talk a little bit about films? And maybe as an actor, are you, are you paid to be an independent film actor? Is this a way to, um, to break into the business? How does that work for actors? <laughs> if you're doing it for the money in the in an independent film, then I mean, you're not really going to make a lot of money. So a lot of actors come to L.A. and they just want to make money. Well, they're in the wrong profession because you're not going to make money. If your heart's in it, then you do independent film. And that was my experience. And when I think about an independent film, I think about a film that's, you know, no compromise. It's for its own artistic integrity. Hollywood, they want to change everything and make a product. But also in independent film, I've had experiences where there's still battles between the director and the producer. So now that kind of throws that up in the air too. I'm not really sure what's, what's the difference really. I mean, is it budget? I don't know. As, yeah, as long as someone else is providing money, do you really get to make all the decisions yourself? Right. Yeah, there's, there's always this question. That must, that must be tough if somebody starts kind of <laughs> pushing in on, on your stuff. Yeah, I think it depends on who they are. And uh, I mean, uh, def definitely if someone's funding you and it's, you know, uh, uh, like for me it was a broadcaster. So of course I had to show them a rough cut. Um, but I was very happy to do it because that was all we had to answer to. Uh, other than that, the rest was uh, control. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, most of my film was actually shot on mini DV. And I was very nervous about that because thinking that there's no way anyone is going to accept this. And then, uh, again, being my first film, but a producer said to me, it doesn't matter. You know, it, what matters is you have the footage and it's a story that mm -hmm. should be told. So just to say, you know, if you think you got some great footage, but you think, oh, you know, it's on bad camera. Well, I mean, it depends on what it is. But if there's a story there, there's a story there. I think that's one thing that's really cool about film festivals. Mm -hmm. If I like when we were we were down in Dallas, um, AFI Dallas, and uh, looking through the uh, guide, if it said this amazing film shot on mini DV or, or something like that, then that would really pique my interest because, mm -hmm. yeah, that means their story and everything was so solid it transcended the the medium. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot of very rich visual films that you won't be able to pull off. Yeah. And I think in a documentary, or if you have a narrative, if it's story-driven or character-driven, a lot of times you know, the medium is not going to matter too much. Because I've, I've seen both sides of the spectrum argue with each other. No, no, we, the only way we can pull off your, your, your thing is with my camera, and it's you know, $200,000 or, or something mm -hmm. like that. It's not necessarily true, but you're not going to go out and make you know, The Hobbit or something like that, you know, on, on mini DV too. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's getting that little nugget of um, story, like you were saying there. Mm -hmm. And that's when you go see these movies. That saw, I don't know if you've heard of it, Joe, but it was called Zombie Girl, which I just, I saw that out in, uh, in Dallas, and it was a documentary about a girl making a zombie movie, ironically, on a camcorder. So the documentary was on a camcorder about a girl making a movie with a camcorder. And both films are getting some notoriety, so it, it's cool. And I read about one recently too that was even filmed on a, a cell phone. So right. they're getting they're getting very basic with the technology. As long as there's a story, like you say, that can be. Yeah. Yeah.